quilts and I'm here quilting a panto that I actually traced out of one of my books so it's not a panto but I'm sure it's a panto somewhere I don't know exactly where it come from but it's butterflies and I'm sewing this into a customer's quilt and I am using minky on the back for the first time So I just wanted to let you see some of the quilting and then I'll go show you the panto. So it's very cute and I do want you to notice, I'm hoping you can see this line here where it goes into the next butterfly because I changed that off the panto. The customer actually wants this to be quilted with some space in it and I'm not sure if I got enough space in it for her so I kind of deleted some wavy things that were in here just to give it a little bit more openness between the actual butterflies. So I will now go show you the panto. So here's the panto and what I've done on the panto is that I've traced one row through here and then I also went back and added another row of butterflies so I actually have two rows on my one makeshift panto and the reason why I did that is because the repeat is five and seven eighths so I can now stitch eleven and three quarters of my design at a time instead of rolling every time I stitch one row I'm roll, rolling every time I stitch two rows and how I did this was that I just traced it out on one piece of typing paper and then I used my copy machine and just copied this numerous times made one row and then came back and put the second row actually on top so I think I will redo this and make it so that the butterflies are bigger and just have one row of big butterflies but I really like the design how it's stitching out and then here it is on the back of the minky you can see some of the actual butterflies and I've been kind of running my hand in it so that I can get rid of some of the butterfly impressions just to see if it would do that so when it's washed it'll be very soft it's not that it's dense or hard it's just that it'll be even softer once all of the fibers of the minky come from out of the stitching. So I will put this camera back on the machine and I will show you how this is stitching up. Oh, I forgot to show you. This is the little zig line that I was talking about on the front a few minutes ago. I just went straight from one butterfly to the next, deleting this out and back in curve here. So I just went straight from one butterfly to the next. And I really like that better anyway. So let's get stitching. So I'm having some technical difficulties. But I have already gone and stitched down this row from the first line of the panto. And I stitched down this side here and started my second row that's going back. And... Before I get started, I do want to say that some people say that their pantos cannot stitch from left to right. So if your panto cannot stitch from left to right, when you got done finishing this first row, you could break your thread and go back down to the opposite end and stitch your panto from the beginning. But I just stitched down the line and I am now stitching this panto in a backwards reverse fashion. It is reverse stitching, so keep that in mind if you are stitching backwards that you have to keep your mind acclimated to that. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you some of this stitching and I am going in the opposite direction this time.
enough stitching for you to see how this design works. I'd like to thank you for watching this video, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.